So today is January 13th um, and I have read uh, Peter and the Starcatcher in this format, um, which is played by Rick Elise, uh, based on the novel by Dave Barry and Ridley Pearson. Um, Peter and the Starcatcher is a play that has musical elements in it. It is not a musical. It's a play that has musical elements in it that can be taken out. Um, it's not required that your actors can sing. It certainly helps, but certainly there, um, the scenes that were required for actual singing, you could absolutely put in different people for, and it wouldn't change anything. It would just be a different person doing those lines and it wouldn't really affect a whole lot. Um, however, it's certainly more fun if some of your actors can sing and therefore can do some of those roles. Um, the production itself, um, I wouldn't say there's anything that's really this big kind of moral story to it. Um, the big thing about it is that it is effectively a prequel for the Peter Pan stories. Um, you have Boy, who's an orphan, along with Ted and Prentice. Boy becomes Peter. Peter becomes Peter Pan. Peter Pan sits in the stardust, which is the pixie dust um, that is used throughout the Peter Pan uh, stories and movies. Um, Molly, who is your lead female character, um, becomes then the, the mother of Wendy, who is the first girl in Peter Pan. Um, in that sense, uh, I mean, it's certainly a very interesting production, right? Um, for terms of what I would consider teaching purposes and going, possibly going to high school and therefore possibly being in charge of a theater department as an English teacher, um, this would be a, a really, really nice play to do. Um, I did it during my senior year of high school. I was the stage manager for this production, um, which I will talk about <laughs> at the very end of this because I think there's, there's a huge part of this that, that relates to that. But um, in of itself, the actual the, the actual play itself, for high school, I think it works great because this is a, it's established very early on in your very first prologue scene that this is a play within a play. This is children making up a story and then doing that sort of deal. And in that, in that instance, right, you can make this as high budget or as low budget as you want, um, which I'll talk about more with my own experience with, with production. Um, but, right, so you can do this as high or as low as you want, and therefore I think it works great for school productions for that reason. Um, also, I did this at the high school level. I would argue you could probably do this with even younger kids. You could probably do this at a middle school level. It would certainly be a little more difficult. Um, you would have to change some of the jokes because some of the jokes, jokes are slightly raunchy. They're not like pushing the edge, right? But if you're gonna do this with younger than high school, you'd probably wanna look, really look at some of the uh, some of the words um, and some of the jokes. But the other thing that makes this actually really good for a high school performance is that there is a really nice mixture of characters um, and cast, right? So you can you can uh, gender swap 
90% of these characters. Really, I would argue the only, the only full five characters that need to be a, that need to be a specific gender are the three orphan boys, uh, Boy, Ted, and Prentice, um, Aster, and then there's a fifth one. Technically, a stash can be gender swapped. Um, RSP was gender swapped. Our ALF was gender swapped. Bum break is usually uh, played by a man. Um, and therefore, ALF is usually played by a woman, but you could, you could absolutely flip those and not worry about it. Um, so, yeah, the three, and then Molly, right? So, your three boys, Molly, and then Aster, and then Pop Stash, maybe. So, like six. Um, it is a very male dominated play. Um, in that sense, so in order to do it, you certainly have to have a lot of faith in your male talent, which in high school theater you may not always have. Um, also, in terms of actual content, there's a really nice mix between lowbrow and highbrow kind of humor. There's a lot of things that really show off kind of intelligence and wordplay, and there's a lot of things that are just like you've made your bed pan that sort of deal which is great you certainly love to see it um so i think that's also what makes it really nice for high school production um anything else to talk about with the actual production um i guess i the other big thing would be like the no i don't need it that's not that's not a huge deal um, but yeah, so, um, the other, uh, other actual kind of important thing is w looking at the mollusks. Um, the mollusks are written in a way that is intentionally humorous. It's meant, it's, they're saying a whole bunch of Italian words, right? Because it's kids doing the performance and therefore they think that Italian words sound for it right and so when the mollusks do anything their chants are in italian are italian words um there is certainly a problem with the moll mollusks right in which you have to be sensitive with it because they are meant to be representative of the native peoples and they're going to some place in the story of it is that they're going from England to some place that's probably continental Africa or maybe Indonesia, one of the two. Um, and for that reason, the mollusks are portrayed in a certain way. And you have to be very content sensitive when it comes to that because they are portraying the native people of these areas. Um, so, you, you have to be sensitive. Because um, even though that they're saying Italian words and it's meant to be kind of funny, if you do that the wrong way, if you dress people the wrong way, it's not gonna look good. So that's for the that's the, the huge part of it. Like the only drawback to this is how do you effectively communicate the mollusks? But other than that, I think the rest of this it's a really good high school level production. Even you could argue maybe even you could drop this down to a middle school production, change a little bit of it, and it'd be fine. On my personal experience with Peter and the Star Catcher, um the reason I decided to go back and read this um, is because this was my, the show that uh, we did during my senior year of high school uh, when I was stage managing. And this was our fall production. And in that production, um, there was a certain person who it was their first high school performance. Uh, they certainly 
I had done many, many performances before then, but it was the first role in a high school theater department as a freshman. And they were kind of the background character. Um, they had like one or two lines in the first half when they were part of Stash's crew, and then they had, they were part of the Mollusk group um, at the end of the play. And that was her first time at the high school level. She had done plenty of experiences beforehand. Phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal actor. Um, the issue is, fast forward four years later, um, she, Jova, um, was diagnosed with very rare cancer and then unfortunately passed away um, due to that cancer um, a couple months ago. Last night, um, her friends put on a performance in her honor um, that tried to encapsulate a lot of the performing arts that she loved because Jova, incredibly, incredibly talented. Like even when I only met her and saw her for one year, right, when she would have been 14, 15, I recognize that she had an incredible, incredible talent. Um, last night, January 12th, they put on a very lovely performance and silent auction in her honor. And so that that led me to reread this today because this was my main production that I worked with her on. Um, so that's my personal honoring to her. Um, it's certainly not a lot, I recognize that, but I think it's, you honor what you can. Um, also, with this performance, this was the performance that we were doing uh, when my father passed away. We were, mm, we opened mid-November. I wanna say it was mid-November was when we, it was like the weekend before Thanksgiving break. So it had been like November 14th. So we were like, my father passed away two weeks before we opened. So this was right before all the tech rehearsals and all things like that. And we were doing all the finishing stuff. And that has always kind of sat with me. I have kept the script, um, but my father passing away and then me doing both dealing with all that while also then coming back and working and doing a lot of stuff for performance for behind the scenes stuff it took a toll on me and it has taken a number of years to really kind of realize that that's why I stopped enjoying theater and wanting to, to do that this sort of thing is because one of my big things that was like this is my moment to show what I can do was unfortunately hampered with this emotional burden um I was certainly going through some some things beforehand and you can tell that by, by the way I was writing I found some other scripts from just like four months before that, before we started working on, on Peter the Starcatcher when I was a junior, at the end of my junior year. And it's way better the way that my handwriting is. The, the notes that I'm making are way better than what I'm just doing as stage manager because of the emotional burden that, they, that everything was put on me at that time and how I was feeling at that time. And so Peter the Starcatcher is unfortunately what drove me away from theater. And that's not because the story itself or the production itself, but because of the circumstances surrounding the production. Now where this ties in with Jova is because I had the opportunity to go and see Jova's memorial service in which they did uh, productions and songs um, from various parts of her life and 
it really reminded me of the um what's the best way to phrase it it really reminded me of the emotional impact as well as the emotional journey um that can be presented through performance um it, it really really impacted me in that way um and so I think it's, it is an unfortunate circumstance in which the remembrance of why I used to love theater and performing um, and even just watching acting had to be remembered because of a very, very unfortunate circumstance. That's the way it is sometimes. Um, yeah, yeah, um, certainly I wish things were different, you know, if, if it came down to, Josh, would you rather have a love for theater or have Jova still in this world? It would still have, it would absolutely be to have Jova still in this world. That's the answer the question because you can't put a toll, you can't put a price on human life, especially one that was as talented as she was. Um, so yeah, yeah. Um, I will keep this production around, right? I will still hold on to, to this copy that has all my shitty, shitty writing on it. And you can tell the emotional duress that I was under because you go back and you look at or I went back and I looked at stuff from my junior year and the the writing is a lot neater. Um, the directions and notes are quippy and funny in a memorable way, but they're also fairly straightforward. Um, you go to the first half of Peter and the Starcatcher here and the handwriting is just scrawling. A lot of it's like incomplete sentences. There's like half-drawn diagrams. Partially because I knew what was going on, but also because it was there was a huge emotional duress on me. And then you get to the second half of this. You get to the second half of Peter the Starcatcher, and there's almost a no notes whatsoever. For almost 40 beats, there's no notes whatsoever. And that's just because I couldn't I was forcing myself to, to to be a part of rehearsals um and I I can I still remember the way this sounds and the way that it's performed it was performed by my group four years later I still remember but there are no notes here and you know it's just one of those things um, so yeah, yeah, this is certainly a production that is mired in grief for me. Um, it certainly is, and I don't think anything can ever take that away. Um, but, but through grief, creation can be born sometimes um love can be born sometimes um this is will certainly be at least this first half of the year will certainly be the year of theater for me not only because of this but also because of shakespeare and also because i have my copy of legally blonde for when i did spotlights um i have all but two copies of Almost Maine. I have the acting edition and then I have the actual book. Um, I have Oh, Death of a Salesman that I'll also read this year, I think. Um, so yeah, yeah. My memorial and my honor to the unfortunate loss of a great talent 
will be to honor them. It will be to honor the theater and honor the arts. Because that's all you can do.